Klein was booking billions of dollars a year on the sales of these drugs, and they were doing it for a decade. They knew from their own compliance program that they were doing wrong more than 10 years ago, but they made the calculation and did the calculated risk and said, we'll go with it. We'll continue to do the fraud because at the end, though they'll nick us, we'll pay less money than if we gave up doing the business of fraud. Fraud was profitable, so they got more of it. GSK is one of the world's largest healthcare companies, but it's not the first to be found guilty of violations like this. The firm says mistakes were made and it has learned. Its operating procedures will also be monitored by government officials for the next five years. Alan Fisher, Al Jazeera, Washington. Thanks to Al Jazeera. Please see more Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera. you'll see all this. You won't see in our local TV. Three billion US dollars to settle the largest case of healthcare fraud in US history. The settlement comes after a probe by the US Justice Department that investigated the company's marketing practices for nine of its products. GlaxoSmithKline pleaded guilty to misbranding the drugs Paxil, Wellbutrin and Avandia. Prosecutors claimed the company had encouraged the use of antidepressant drug Paxil for children, even though it was not approved for anyone under the age of 18. Wellbutrin was also pushed for uses it was not approved for, including weight loss and sexual dysfunction. GSK failed to report safety data about diabetes drug Avandia to the Food and Drug Administration. James Cole, Deputy Attorney General, spoke out in support of the criminal charges. We are determined to stop practices that jeopardize patients' health, harm taxpayers, and violate the public trust. The settlement amounts to $1 billion in criminal fees and a further $2 billion in civil fees after the company went to great lengths to promote the drugs, such as providing meals and spa treatments to doctors that prosecutors stated amounted to illegal kickbacks. GlaxoSmithKline have agreed to be monitored by the US government for the next five years. You're watching the Financial News Network. I'm Chuck Pierce. GlaxoSmithKline announced that it has reached an agreement in principle with the U.S. government to conclude the company's most significant ongoing federal government investigations. Specifically, the investigation into GSK's sales and marketing practices begun by the U.S. Attorney's Office of Colorado in 2004 and later taken over by the U.S. Attorney's Office of Massachusetts. The U.S. Department of Justice's investigation of possible inappropriate use of the nominal price ex exception under the Medicaid rebate program and the Department of Justice's investigation of the development of marketing of Andia. CEO Andrew Witte said, quote, this is a significant step toward resolving difficult long-standing matters which do not reflect the company that we are today. In recent years, we have fundamentally changed our procedures for compliance, marketing, and selling in the U.S. to ensure that we operate with high standards of integrity and that we conduct our business openly and transparently. Existing provisions cover the final settlement of $3 billion, and GSK expects to make payments under the final agreement in 2012. Payments will be funded through existing cash resources. GlaxoSmithKline has a potential upside of 14.6% um, based on the price of $40.27 in an average consensus. Analyst well, of price course it is, said Mark Twain. Fiction has sense. to make sense. That's your the question is, what would Mark Twain have right here, classified right this posting from the FDA as? Truth or fiction? That's the distribution of the suicidal acts that happened in the registration trials of these three drugs here. But slide two, and I don't know how to move the slides forward. Yeah, this is how the company reports, FDA reviews the drug, and journal articles report those acts. You referred earlier to the Ferguson et al. article, on which I'm a, a co-author. We had to cope with this. We didn't undo this particular bit of bias to come to the results we had. The results we, we had would have been worse if we had undone this. You referred to the MHRA article. Well, MHRA included three placebo suicides that weren't um, placebo in clinical trials. People who, a week after going on Prozac, went on to commit suicide. Dr. Loughran has an article from 2001 in which he's the sole author that repeats this mistake. Dr. Loughran 
in this particular document here gives you no hint that all of the articles that he refers to showing that there is no increase in risk also repeat the mistake that you've seen here. But this is the most interesting slide. This you won't have seen, perhaps. This is data from three and a half years ago. This is data from FDA that FDA put in the public domain. This shows you a clearly statistically significant increased risk of suicide. FDA said three and a half years ago, but well, we can get this risk to go away if we control for age and sex. Now, controlling for age and sex in controlled RCTs to begin with suggests you're doing something off the odd, that the clinical trials were invalid to begin with. FDA also said that we, when we control for location, that it actually makes a difference. And this year, FDA reported that when you look at the clinical trials that happened in the US here, the placebo controlled trials, that there were fewer people went on to actually commit suicide. I'm sure you know that there are clinical trialists here in the US who've ended up in jail for, in, for, for entering fake patients into this clinical trial program. <coughs> Fake or bogus patients do all sorts of interesting things. They get well on treatment. They don't commit suicide. It's just inconvenient for the audit trail if they do. Does this explain FDA's findings? I think you've asked the right questions. You've asked, why have FDA left out the people who seem to be doing poorly, the people who drop out from the... OK, Edwin, Thank I you. think that's enough. Now you know what FDA is. I worked in the government for 20 years. And we in Malaysia, we think FDA is God. You know, the Bureau, Pharmaceutical Control Bureau, thinks FDA is the ultimate. And today you see what they do. So we have to have our own intelligence. Okay. Now you have seen this news and it is necessary that we should be cautious about what is happening in the pharmaceutical world and don't simply register just because FDA registered, uh, we can also register in Malaysia. And this is what happened. Please register our traditional products, do research on that and prove that it also can help the people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Edwin, for the, for the video. Very nice, huh? Okay. Sorry, you have to bear with me, you know, I may be boring, but... Country health plan. First thing, please go and read it. <laughs> Quality issues in the plan. First, it's prepared by allopaths. Without wellness, alternative medicine experts. It's essentially a disease injury management plan with only minimal proactive for caring wellness aspects. Health plan of Malaysia, ladies and gentlemen, you are hearing. The allopathy system is presented without value analysis. I'll tell you what value analysis is. Value analysis is, if you practice a system, you must know how much value it has, how much it can heal, how much it can cure, how much it can manage. Healing value and quality of life, hydrogenicity. You know what is hydrogenicity? Hydrogenicity means disease caused by doctors. It is from the ancient Tamil word, aither and genich. Aither comes from the word vaithir in Tamil means doctor. Genich means to give birth. Doctor gives birth to diseases, you know. Nosocomia, infections. Cost, affordability, effectiveness, wastage, expertise and quality of care not addressed in the proper manner. If you, if you all go and read this. No creative research to find native solutions. As if Malaysians cannot think and do research. They have to wait for somebody to do research and copy it. And if the research is wrong, they copy it very perfectly. Copying a wrong research. No creative research to find native solutions, alternative health care, natural health care, not researched, considered and evaluated for safer remedies. The health plan has nothing, virtually nothing. That's our great health plan. 
Wait now, second, now wait, wait so fast. Sorry, bin. Go ah uh, ah uh, uh, okay. The percentage of people going for alternative health care not at all mentioned in this plan. I am sure in this crowd, you all have gone and seen a Bomo, a Dukun, a Bawang, or reflexologist, or integrative medicine people, or a naturopath, or a Chinese medicine man. How many people going for that not mentioned? And they say it's a national plan. You see, in other words, only data from the helopathic system used to develop the country health. The data from the hospitals, from the health, they take and develop the plan. And they are enslaved to Western research models, giving no room for native indigenous creative thinking. We have a copy mindset. Just like copying FDA, you know. National health research itself is subjugated by the Western drug cartel. And they control research protocols, giving no room for original local novelty in R&D. You go through and see this one. How strongly he said, hey, Malaysia, wake up, do your own research, come out with problem, uh, solutions. Tada. They're waiting for next uh, Glaxo's drug on diabetes, perhaps. Just I give you an example. Huh? Our dengue formula was presented in 2006. You can see all the CDs and all that, for which they said they will do follow up studies until now sleeping on it. Because we are trying to sell something to somebody who don't know the product. So they are scared. For food products, I'm sure some people from the bureau are here. Chemical drug registration protocol used. So if you put tapioca powder in a capsule, you have to register under medicine. I want to know the scientific logic. If you put rice powder, same. You put and see. And sell, they'll catch you and say, why didn't you stay? But rice is sold in Mama Mia shop everywhere. Caffeine. We have a product, we developed caffeine, natural caffeine, not caffeine, hydrochloride, synthetic. And they say, you, you have to register it. But they don't know Nescafe has got so much of caffeine. And it is sold freely. So sometimes we copy without thinking. <clears throat> If you ask them, they say this is the state of the art, FDA standards. Yeah, see, careful. Quality of doctors churned out, not critically evaluated, professional experience were not assessed and correctly noted. The plan doesn't say whether our doctors were churned from the universities, which now 24 soon will be 33, highest in the world also. US only got how many? 120 with 350 million. We with 30 million, we got 33 colleges. They don't know what we are doing. Clinical drug proliferation, increasing related morbidity and hydrogenity is present, not presented in the public. See, when I worked in the hospital in 1975, doctors can only prescribe four medicine. Today, if they prescribe 12 or so, you don't bother. And then, when they have the side effects, they just keep quiet. Nobody studies hydrogenicity. Whether when we give so many drugs, whether the blood is getting better or worse, whether the drug is helping him or not helping. You ask Dr. Aguilar, when the patients go, they come with a bag of drugs as if they went for supermarket shopping. Careful, very, very risky. Then, no studies done to match the usage of new drugs and its impact on outcome. Ah. Avendia approved in US, we also approved. Now Avendia, what happened in US? They blame herbal and treadmill for morbidity without proper research. They said, oh, herbs will destroy kidney. But they won't say, amicacin will also destroy the kidney, they won't say. 
No studies done whether there's a serious mismatch between sign and business.